Well, it's just getting light here. I'm up to beat the heat because it's going to be an absolute scorcher today. And I'm going to be putting together the bits for the Mark II solar wax renderer. It's going to be really simple, and I'm doing it this way just to see if it works. Um, so, let's get to it. Well, hello. Uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, my name's Stuart Chignall. And, um, in this video, I'm going to be redoing the uh, solar uh, beeswax renderer that I did in a different video. The first thing I had to do was dismantle the old one. Then I had to drill the holes for the hot water uh, inlet pipe and the cold water outlet pipe. Next I had to fit the bulkhead fittings. Um, the top one was pretty easy, but the bottom one was a bit trickier. Now I'm used to doing these on farms where you've got a, a lot of choice of fence lines and space. Whereas on a town block, <laughs> not so much. So I'm going to try and um, see what I can do here. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is put the hot water tank over here and then I'll get more fall, more length of fence to put it down. Um, that tree is going to be a bit annoying but so you can't do anything about that. Uh, right. Now because we're just using barb fittings, uh, they're just push-ons and because also we're using um, uh, low density polyethylene pipe which is pretty soft and pliable. Every connection has to have one of these because as the water heats up, the poly heats up, the poly expands, gets very soft, and I'll just, even under these really low pressures, it could just pop off the fitting. So yeah, each fitting gets one of these. So time to connect the hose, connect the pipe, and then roll it out. Next stage is loading out the hose. Now this bit is, oh well, it's, like, it's, it's annoying. Um, you've got to get it. You've got to have a consistent fall going down. You've got to have a consistent rise coming up. Get it wrong and the thermosiphon doesn't work. That even a small uh, airlock can mean that the, it just won't, it just won't work. And this is particularly the case when the fall and or the rise is relatively shallow. The pumping pressures involved in thermosiphons are so ridiculously small that they make gravity systems um, appear, you know, super pressurized. It's incredibly important that the fall going down is consistent and the rise coming back up is consistent. You do have a little bit of leeway, but that leeway is equal to the diameter of the pipe. And what I mean by that is if you have a slight dip and then rise in the pipe, the difference in that has to be less than the diameter of the pipe. Because if it isn't, you get air trapped in the top of the undulation of the pipe. So over time, air will accumulate in the rise of that undulation. And you'll get an airlock. And the pumping pressures in thermosiphon are just so small that it, the, it'll, it's not possible to blow it out with the thermosiphon. Uh, which means you've got to do it manually and it, it's just a continual nightmare. So get this bit wrong and it just doesn't work, basically. Um, which, and again, and this is one, and I'm going to go into the science of that, I think, in another video. I was thinking about doing it in this video, but I'm going to go into it in another video. Um, and this is one of the reasons why you don't see thermosiphons used that often, because, because they're so finicky and so easy. If you don't install them properly, then they, yeah, they just don't work. And it's why pumps um, are used in these systems so so commonly because it just adding a pump in is just so so easy compared to getting a thermosiphon right. And what you can see me doing here is I've laid a string line to get a consistent rise, and then I'm using the battens of wood to keep to get that poly pipe. Straight, not flat, but straight, straight, inclined, shallow rise, um, and keep it that way. Especially as the hot poly heats up and it expands, and you gets it gets all wibbly and wobbly. You really need something rigid to hold it in place, or lots and lots of string, and because you need to adjust it. And but it's just yeah, 
bit annoying. The only reason you would do this is if you want, the only reason you really use thermo siphons is if you want a purely passive system. But quite honestly, I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but I thought it was, yeah, I thought it was worth a shot. So I'm just back from the Sunday market. Okay, so there it is, all set up and working. Um, I've checked the sight glass down the bottom of the thermo siphon loop. It's working, there is particles moving in there, there is a current flowing, which is awesome. Whether it's enough, going to be enough to get to, to the target temperature of 61, well probably more realistically, we nearly need around 65 degrees C to melt that wax. We'll see in the morning. Um, I'll hopefully come out and there'll be a nice cake of solidified wax sitting on top. Um, yeah. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. I can do another video on the on some of the more in-depth um, physics behind it. In particular, in particular, the um, the fluid be dynamics behind what makes thermosiphons work. Um, for me, it was understanding thermosiphons better that really helped me to get a better grip on on fluid dynamics. Helped me to understand it better. Um, and also help me understand how pumps work, basically. Um, yeah. So, if, but if that's, it'll be a lot of work to do that video, and like I can do it if people want me to. So, you could, if you want me to do it, tell me, tell me in the comments and stuff. But a video I will be doing is um, I've, I've, at the Sunday market. I got a couple of uh, boxes of apricots today. I'm going to be drying those out with uh, a solar dehydrator made from some of the rest of that toughened glass. Um, so yeah, if, you're interested, if that's interest to you, um, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that when the video is done, you know, you'll, you'll know it's out to publish and watch it, to watch it. Um, yeah, so, it, and if you're new to the channel, I do a whole bunch of stuff. From bee stuff like this, or bee related stuff like this, to agricultural stuff, urban foraging, urban farming, um, woodworking, prospecting, because, you know, I live in the Golden Triangle, and I have literally, gold just there um, yeah so yeah any of that interests you click the bell notification and um, we'll see you in the next video catch you around